Lefkowitz, Select Woman Lefkowitz, and uh, Select Woman Flynn that we may have to um, call a special meeting on Wednesday to finish our agenda. Also, uh, Select Woman Lefkowitz um, had the death of a, a very dear friend's father, and we'll have to get off at 5:30. And we do have the appeals meeting at 6:30 on the same WebEx. So. Um, I'm just going to announce for the public, we will be ending the meeting at 530 tonight. Um, hopefully we can get through as quickly as possible. I will do my best to be efficient. Um, so I would just ask everyone to rise uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would um, just like to say thank you for accommodating my personal, um, for recom accommodating that request today. Thank you. Sure, of course. And I'm very sorry um, about your friend's dad. Thank you. Um, I would ask uh, to, uh, before we begin the meeting, if we could just take a moment uh, of silence uh, for fit one of Fairfield's sons, Charlie Capalpo, uh, who lost his battle with cancer. Um, I just hope that our uh, Fairfielders will keep family, uh, Charlie's family in their thoughts and prayers. Thank you. All right, so our next item is, um, can I get a motion to consider an act upon the minutes of April 18th, 2022? So moved. Tom? I seconded it, but I was on mute. Okay. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, none all me. in favor? Aye. 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 And I, I wonder as a point of order if we can waive the reading of items 4 through 11, if we're going to talk them through. I don't know that we need Absolutely. to. I will so I'm going to make them, yeah, I'll yep. make a motion to um, waive the readings of items actually as far as we get, but for now I'll say 1 through 11. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so item number four, just quick. Um, this is a, uh, a purchasing authority uh, contract uh, for Jennings Beach Pavilion facility, and we have on Anthony and Gerald Foley. Um, would you two like? Would either one of you like to just briefly describe the item? Sure, I could handle that. Um, at, through the ARPA process, uh, I believe last May, June, July, um, one of the projects that was approved was renovations to the Jennings Beach um, Pavilion uh, that's down there. Part of the project is to redo the siding and uh, basically keep the building in intact, but make it look a lot prettier than it is. Um, we've replaced the windows already, but the siding is just one of the, the final touches we need to get on it. And this went out to bid, so all those are uh, all those requirements have been met. And we're just looking for approval on the contract. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I'll open up to the board. Uh, can we just confirm that the town attorney has looked at this and this went through the uh, the appropriate bid process, please? This is Jim Baldwin, town attorney. That is correct, Mr. Flynn, as it is in the case of the other agreements that will be reviewed and considered by you today. Thank you, and Mr. Foley. Yeah, so yeah, so we put this out to bid. We had three bidders, and the company before you was the lowest uh, qualified bidder for the project. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next item is regarding uh, 204,000 for engineering support services uh, on analyzing potential mitigation solutions for um, our post road, uh, Thorpe Street and Reef Road 
during, uh, due to flooding issues. This is part of our downtown resiliency, remember uh, me speaking about. I have, um, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second it. Thank you. We have Bill Hurley and we have Gerald Foley on the line. Bill, do you wanna just briefly um, describe, I know we've talked about this item uh, quite a bit in the past, but just briefly uh, update. Uh, yeah, this, um, this is a continuation of our uh, green infrastructure uh, project where uh, Maloney McBroom, which is now SLR, uh, developed uh, concept plans uh, for green infrastructure. Uh, they did a, a report uh, that was completed in 2019. And uh, with the ARPA money, uh, we were um, uh, selecting them uh, to continue that and also try to develop resiliency for our downtown and expand it just uh, the areas, uh, like you had mentioned before, tour, you know, Carter Henry and Reef Road and, and um, you know, Sherman Street and that downtown area there um, uh, to uh, try to resolve some of the flooding issues that we have downtown. Thank you, Bill. I'm gonna open it up to the board for questions, comments. So Bill, um, this isn't to do the actual work. This is for a study to come back to us and tell us what the art of the possible is. Is that correct? That that's the first part of it, Tom. The uh, yeah. the second part is actually to have them develop plans. Originally, they were just going to do a study, and uh, uh, Bucky and myself uh, decided that we want we want more than just a study. The ARPA funds have to be spent, uh, so we we want to design uh, as well. Uh, so they will give us uh, one to two design proposals, uh, which then we could put out to bid for this. And where will the funding come for the actual work? Like they're going to come back with a project and say, here are your two options. And then we have to go through this and then fund those projects. Is that correct? We have uh, um, 1.4 million that was approved uh, last year with the ARPA money. And yep. uh, assuming 200, roughly 200,000 for design, that gives us 1.2 million to, uh, to implement the project. Do you have any, um, any, gut sense is that 1.2 million are we in the ballpark there or are we already here and hey this is going to be more than that uh no we we haven't gotten that far yet uh the uh consultant has done as i said uh some studies from before they've dipped their toe in the water so to speak uh for this part but until we get the contract signed they 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 uh they haven't really started the design yet Okay, so we could be, it, it could not be enough. Uh, the 1.2 could not be enough to move forward with this eventually. There, there is a slight possibility of that, but we, we have at least based on some other projects and uh, depending on, you know, how far we want to go with it, uh, that certainly is, is a good, uh, I even call it more than a starting point, but a, a, solid, uh, a solid figure to use. Okay, thank you, to Bill. To that end, hi, um, would they, in the process of giving us a proposal or plans, are they able to tier in an a la carte kind of a way in case, to Tom's point, it is not affordable or? Yeah, no, no. We we, to... Yeah, we, we um, typically would do that. They would, uh, they'll finish the uh, design of the projects. Uh, we'll have a, an engineer's cost estimate at the time before we put it out to bid. If it's within reason or, or the range, we would we'd put it out to bid. Uh, if it was um, uh, higher than what we had anticipated, uh, we have the option of doing uh, a base bid with add alternates to give the town protection. Uh, and if it's something like, let's just say, I'm just gonna throw out a number of a thousand feet of uh, 36 inch pipe and we could only afford 800, well, there's no sense you know, you got to do the thousand. We'd have to come back to the board for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. All right, if there's no further comment. Um, I did, I'm sorry, I apologize on the other two items. I'm open up to public. I don't really notice if there is anyone on, but um, if anybody has, if there's anyone member from the public who wanted to comment on this item. 
Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bill. Um, the next item, um, this one is the MOU agreement with our city of Bridgeport on the Fair Child Wheeler Detention uh, Project. This is also the ARPA funds that we voted on for the Brewster River uh, Project. So this is the MOU that was going along with the item um, that we approved uh, back when we approved the ARPA funding. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second it. And we have attorney Baldwin and we have Bill Hurley on the line. Any comments, uh, gentlemen? Oh, just for uh, for our uh, project there, yeah, this is something that's been in the works for a couple of uh, months. We finally got all parties uh, together and to agree to, uh, on this uh, memorandum of understanding. It allows the, um, the town to go into the uh, Fairchild Wheeler Golf Course to uh, implement the uh, two uh, proposed detention areas. Uh, we have a maintenance agreement with it where they would maintain the daily or short-term maintenance and the long-term maintenance uh, would be a 50-50 split, probably looking at at least a couple of decades, if not longer, before we have to do any uh, significant maintenance. I'll open it up to the board for any questions or comments. I don't have. I'm good. Okay, very good. Is there any member of the public who would like to comment on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, item number seven. Uh, this is um, Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, this is a transfer, not more than 325 thousand dollars from their uh their fund balance uh for the carriage drive sewer line extension project i do have a motion to approve so moved second in. all right and we have um attorney baldwin on the line and john Bodie is on the line um i'll uh i'll, I'll start if you'd like th yes thanks john yep yep um Carriage drive um, residents, five out of the six that are on the road, got together. Uh, they all had failing sec septic systems. They approached the commission to put a sewer extension on their road. They went through the proper channels. They got the proper engineering done. And we would like to fund it, and they will pay back over 20 years, bond it at the, the existing town rate with a lien on their house. They will pay 4250 to connect, and their calculated rate based off water will be just like everyone else. And there is one homeowner that is not going to hook up, but he can or they can, whatever they choose at the existing rate that the people are paying right now. Thank you, John. That's helpful. I'm going to open up to the board for any questions. I have some questions. Um, sure. I support this and I serve on the WPCA. So some of this I already know the answers to, um, but I think it's it's not only interesting for the public to understand, but there there's a few good reasons why supporting this makes good sense, in my opinion. Um, environmentally, I think it'd be great if, if Mr. Bodie could touch on that, or I saw some members of the of the commissioner on the line, but to to even at some point, and if now is not the appropriate time to talk about how this process works, I think would be helpful in terms of WPCA and, and how they spend their money. But if, if, if we could just hear a little bit more about why this is a great idea, I think it would be helpful for people to understand because we're, while we are talking about six residents potentially, um, it does make, you know, it, it is a good decision for the town. So I just wanted to point that out, but. There are failing septic systems and to, and to get those onto a sewer system is not only good for the homeowner, for the environment, but also for the town as far as revenue. Um, there's a lot of flooding in the area due to development. There's a lot of runoff. So it's a win-win really. It's, you're helping the environment and you're helping the, you're helping the residents. I mean, to replace a septic system, it's 20 to $30,000. 
And as you mentioned, John, uh, they're going to be uh, paying the the town the WPCA back. Absolutely, over 20 years bonded at the existing town rate right now. Yes, there's a there'll be a lien on their property. Correct. Very good. And um, and question just about oversight as this project is happening. Who is the person that is really kind of managing this project? It's it's one of so many that are are happening through the WPCA. So what, how, can someone just describe the process of oversight, project oversight? I think they would have to get in, inspections on the work done as it goes. I'm not, I'm not up to speed on that completely, but that would be my understanding. Yeah, this is this is uh, town attorney Jim Baldwin. Uh, that's correct. Like any any project like this, it it goes through the permitting process, and and there may be a, a site monitor uh, assigned to it through the DPW or or conservation even. So uh, all those kind of standard protocols will be in place here, and and it is going to go out to an RFP, um, assuming that this is approved by the board of selectmen and the board of finance. I don't have any questions on this one. I'm all good. All right, very good. <clears throat> Is there any uh, comments from the public on this matter? I see there's some members, as Nancy mentioned, from uh, WPCA. Did anyone want to make a comment, or we're just here for support? Here, here for support. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Cuz cuz that's just the kind of committee we are. Yeah. That's awesome. Very well, you do awesome. you do good work and we, we do appreciate it. Thank and you. we appreciate you taking the time to be on uh, the meeting too. Well, if there's no further comment and there's no public comment, all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, our next item, there's two, actually eight and nine, which we're going to take together because they're related. Um, and so this, uh, we also have John Bode on this. This is WPCA as well. And so um, the first is a bond for $2.4 million for the East Trunk Wetlands Crossing Project, issuing the bonds for those. And then item number nine is the resolution, the supplemental resolution attached with this item. So can I get a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. I'll, I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna open it up. Uh, John, do you wanna just uh, speak a little bit to this sure. item? Sure. Um, the East Trunk carries two thirds of the town's uh, sewage from various parts of the town. There's a 36 inch line on the Metro side of, and there's a 36 inch pipe on Kenwood Avenue. Across the wetlands, it's 33 inches. During heavy rains, we get a lot of bottlenecking there. We get backups upstream of the Metro Center, along the Kings Highway, I-95 corridor, along Haley, Brentwood, Berwick, and beyond. So adding in the, the additional hotels and whatever they're going to put at the Metro Center is going to put more flow into that pipe and cause more of a bottleneck and cause more of an issue. If we just put replace that 33 inch section with a 36, we smooth it out, we alleviate those problems and we allow the Metro Center to develop and, and enter into the system. Thank you, John. Um, obviously, this is an important uh, sewer project, um, and it does feed a lot of different areas. It's a, an important issue. Um, we just also have bond council on, and we have a uh, town attorney on. If there's any questions from the board on any of this, on either one of those items. But I will take each item up um, separately for votes, but I just want us to have the discussions together. I so, don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. So this John, is for John Stastrom, you're on mute. I, I don't know if you were speaking, but um 
I still can't hear you. Sorry. Is John on? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. We can't hear you. Uh oh, it's not working. Sometimes it's um on your I don't know it's on your computer or you're you're not calling in right you're not using a call in line. Um, it's a star number. Oh, it's a cell number. Uh, no, I don't know if it. I'm just saying there's sometimes if he's got the phone and they use a star and a certain number. I don't know if oh, I want right. to tell it. Brenda, this is Jared. Uh, I don't know if this is what he was going to address, but I can add something to this just to differentiate between the two resolutions. Okay. The the first one is the you know the typical bonding and appropriation sure. authorization, and the second one is the uh, an agreement basically laying out an agreement between the town and the WPCA. So the town is going is going to be the uh one who issued who who bonds the money uh however this agreement says that the wpca is responsible for uh essentially paying reimbursing us for the amount of the debt service on on that bond and i'm john not sure if that, i'm not sure if that's what john staffson was going to say or not but he said yes <laughs> okay good. good okay thank you for that clarification jared that's very helpful you're welcome Okay, I'll open it up to the board for any questions. Yeah, so I do have a question on this. For this, um, given what you just said, Jared, and thanks, I think you explained that well. Um, did WPCA also vote on this so that they have agreed that they will pay the bond, the bond back through the town for this? Uh, John... Bodhi, do you want to answer that? My understanding is that they voted on the item, uh, and I believe that they voted on this as uh, as I laid it out, that this would be a, a yeah, debt service cost for them. The chairman's on. Uh, right. Mark, do you want to comment? Yeah. yeah, no, we have officially voted on the on the wetland crossing project. The we, We've had some pretty extensive conversations on the pump station um and um i believe that's on this month's agenda so we voted on the wetlands project so that one um i mean we are voting on it right that one you've actually said yes and you also agree that you're going to pay the town back for the bonds the other one you're saying you haven't officially voted on that one yet is that yeah yeah so that's on our pipeline report yeah, so I, I'm not comfortable voting for something before you guys have voted on it, to no, be honest with you. Sure. Yeah. Um, I have no problems with the other one. So you're not comfortable, <clears throat> excuse me, with item number nine, Tom? I believe it's item number 10 that they have not. Uh, is that right, John? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Which well, 10 one? and 11 are. Um, Those are different. And I guess the question is, what does it push back? Because I agree with Tom. It does, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's no problem whatsoever. I think this is, is just a, uh, was a priority, prioritization process of what are the kind of the immediate projects for the WPCA and, and to line up the financing. And, um, and, and we're happy to get it approved internally uh, this month and then bring it back next month on the uh, uh, Fairfield Beach Road project. So what are, what are we saying then um, that items eight, nine, 10 and 11 need to be uh, postponed? No, I think it's only number 10 and 11. We're on item eight and nine now. We're not on those other right. items. He, I asked the question and then he came back and answered it for both. That's all I'm saying. So I think because WPCA is fine, they have voted on the East Trunk Wetlands Crossing project. They've said that's a priority. John, did you guys ask, you voted to ask for the bonds from the town and you guys will be responsible for those bonds, correct?
Yes, correct. Then that's then eight and nine is fine. Ten and eleven, I would say, is not fine. Okay, so uh, let's just deal with eight and nine as we have those uh, have a motion and second, and then when we get to that, we'll talk about that. And right, the motion so on the table is for item eight, correct? Eight and yes, well, eight and nine we were taking up together as um, discussion purposes, but I'm going to split them out separately for vote. So right now we have a motion on eight and a second. And I have no further questions from a, a board perspective for me. No, I'm I'm fine with everything that's been uh, communicated and supplied. Okay. Is there any uh, comments from the public on the site? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nancy. Yep. Aye. Okay. Motion carries unanimously on item number eight. Item number nine, uh, which is associated with. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? So, so moved. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion on this side? None for me. Thank you. Is there any comments from the public on this item? I wanted one question on this item. Sure. I like that, and forgive me, I should have asked it a little bit earlier. Uh, I'm assuming this is a 20 year bond. J Jared, can you uh, confirm that for me? Yeah, okay. John Sastra, yes. give me the thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of this item? Aye. 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 <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so then the discussion that is that we would, uh, the board would prefer to wait for the WPCA to uh, vote on item 10 and 11 prior to taking it up from the Board of Selectmen. So, I can make a motion to table it to uh, wait a minute though. Attorney Baldwin, is the, what, what should the motion be? Yeah, I, I, I think you uh, you table it uh, to uh, a date certain, which would be the, the next Board of Selectmen meeting, whenever that is, assuming okay. the WPCA is going to uh, vote uh, in the interim. Mark, when is your meeting? No, we should table that till June. Okay, to, all right, to a June, a, a meeting of the Board of Selectmen in June? Mm hmm Okay. So a motion to postpone to a Board of Selectmen meeting in June. Items uh, 10 and 11. I can second it if you make the motion. Yep. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item passes unanimously. Um, okay, our next um, item, item number 12. Um, I want to amend this item. Uh, there was a, just a, a, a mathematical mistake. It is um, to hear, uh, this is a resolution, not, it's for appropriating, but not to a seven four nine eleven. It is for 1,949,000. Seven seven eight. So again, that's one nine four nine seven seven eight. And this is the two point eight million is changing to that number, Brenda. Yes, correct. Uh, so right. this is. Uh, so I just wanted to say that I'm going to amend it. So I'm going to ask for a motion to hear and consider adopt a bond resolution entitled a resolution appropriating. 1,949,778 for the costs of a townwide facility system upgrade and author, author, authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance, finance such appropriation. Yeah, I'll second it. Somebody's gonna make a motion. Oh, I'll make okay. the motion. Thank you. Nancy sorry. seconds. Yeah, Very good, sorry, thank you. I thought you were making it official. No, I'm sorry, I just wanted to amend to amend the, the item. So that was an amended motion. Uh, okay, so we have uh, James Ryan on, on our line um, and Jared Smith, Smith, and we have uh, John Stastrom also on the line. Uh, for any, uh, do you wanna, uh, James, do you wanna just talk a little bit about what we're doing here? Yes, sure. Um, it's basically a um, taking that town facilities wide audit that we had and uh, working on the priority ones that were um, 
the most urgent life safety type of items. Um, and, you know, just to sum some of them up would be, you know, some basement ventilation and kitchen hoods and apparatus bay ventilation, some seismic an analysis to, su to, to some of these essential buildings, meaning the firehouses and the police stations and, and such. And then um, that pretty much sums it up for the priority ones. Um, uh, and, and the soft costs. Okay, thanks, James. Um, I'm going to open it up to the board for any questions. So, James, this is a result of the study, the life safety system study that we paid for a year or two ago across the town uh, properties. Is that correct? Yes. And they came back, the consultants came back and said, you guys need to address these things throughout your town buildings just on life and safety issues for our employees and visiting members of the public. And then you guys went and took that and said, okay, how much is this going to cost to do? And then you went out and, and tell us a little bit about that process. You got, you got um, estimates you received in order to do this work. Fair? Fair, yes. Silver Petroselli gave us estimates as well. We paid them to do that. Um, and that's in that report that was shared a while back, uh, January or February. And um, they gave us, they laid out a nice 10 year plan with soft costs. And this is really the first year of that. Um, and, um, you know, we, we obviously have. Um, a couple of other asks in there as well for the senior center uh, renovations. And um, we also have some money left over from the audit itself, that ask, in case there were emergencies that we needed to take care of. If they found any emergencies right then and there, we had some money in there to do that. So there's money left over for that. And therefore that is the like the recalculation of of her amendment, right, you know, and um, and their uh, and you know, and then you know, so these are their soft costs as well. So that's you know, they they just gave us a thirty percent average soft cost because that's what Silver Petroselli normally uses as you know as a target. When would this work begin? Um, it, the process of hiring an architect, getting bid specs, and uh, going out to bid on some of them would take some a couple of months. Okay. And for the rest of them, you think a longer period of time. But these are issues that need to be addressed based on the, that report. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll withhold further questions for now. Nancy, I don't know if you have anything. No. Okay. Do we have any reason to believe that any of these uh, adjustments aren't going to last? This is a 20 year bond you're asking for here, correct? Yeah, I, I think with, with anything I, I, that some, most of these are infrastructure um, installments. So say the kitchen hood. Just take that for example, that, that we're gonna add duct work and a new kitchen hood with makeup air and a makeup air, you know, fan. Yeah, I think that's probably some safeties and, and you know, um, you know, a, a motor might go bad within the 20 years, but the infrastructure is still there. It's gonna be new infrastructure that's still gonna be in place. Can I actually ask a question in thinking about what you just said? Sure. Um, maybe a little strange, but so they've given us this report. Is there any, um, are we on the hook for having to do something? Are we liable if we don't do something? What's sort of the accountability? If they've told us in the life and safety realm that something needs to be done, what is either their protection or ours in either doing it or not doing it? Do you know what I'm asking? Is that, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Bucky, do you want to jump in on that? <clears throat> Well, you know, once you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. When you have studies like this 
conducted, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, you're getting an evaluation uh, for uh, your entire uh, complement of buildings. But what emerges is these highlighted number one issues are either ADA, fire safety, uh, security, uh, or items like that. And you, you, once you have this report in your hand, items such as this uh, are, are really, really important to address. So items two, three, four, and five, and there are five items. I don't know if you had a chance to read the report, it's extensive, uh, but the uh, items that came back to us, number one, highlighted in red, they have to be addressed. You can have OSHA violations, uh, health violations, uh, an array of different uh, uh, violations that can cause, cause some real heartburn or uh, worse, uh, put us at risk. So these are the items that we absolutely must address. Thank you. Thank you, Bucky. Um, any other qu additional questions from the body? Okay, seeing none. Is there any uh, comments or questions, uh, qu comments from the public? Thank you. Brenda, the only thing I, I'll say is um, having gone through a lot of the town buildings and been part of the process that actually advocated for the study, um, the town has invested, as you well know, uh, and rightfully so, a, a lot of money in the schools over the last 20 years and, and precious little into the town buildings. And, you know, I don't see particularly when it comes to the life safety issues that these items are optional or can be put off any longer. Um, I think we need to address them for the for the benefit of the uh, employees and the safety of the people that traverse these buildings on a on a uh, a day to day basis, whether they be uh, vendors or townspeople that are coming in to conduct business with the town. Thank you, um, and I, I want to thank uh, Bucky for bringing this um, this to my attention when he first came on that we should be doing this. That it was an important. Uh, to invest the money in, in doing this report. And it's a valuable document, I think, for our community. So thank you, Bucky. Before we vote, one, one last question. I'm assuming that based on all the analysis and things that have been done, there's not wholesale changes that are being proposed over the course of this next many years for these town buildings. In other words, we're not going to mothball a building, change a building dramatically. We're not going to address issues and then two years later say, by the way, we're no longer going to use that facility anymore. Can you just confirm that? Well, I, I can say this, Tom, you don't, you really don't have a choice. If these buildings are being used for the next two years, mm -hmm. uh, the town is at risk. Uh, the employees who use these buildings are at risk. And if if there is a notion that the use of these buildings will change uh, in a year and a half or two years, I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Yep. That's what I presumed you're, and thought. You're, you're also touching on kind of a deeper heart of what I was getting at. If we're now committed, if this goes through, which I do support them for the same reasons, um, and then something, God forbid, happens, to an employee or there's some mishap, are we protected because we are actively now involved in the upgrade or making the safety, taking the necessary safety precautions? Is there any cost benefit in that regard? I think there would, that would be a question for attorney Baldwin. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to actually wrap my head around this one because I'm not. Uh, I'm not intimate with with the the project, so you'd have to explain to me. Well, um, I guess what I could ask it in a different way. The fact is, if there are some buildings that are life safety things that are kind of immediate, is there any 
point in cease and desist and functioning to protect the town? Or are we protected just by the mere act of, of now engaging in the remediation or the fixing or the bettering or what have you? I think it's very situational and, and it depends on the particular circumstances uh, based on uh, what I've heard. Uh, it's important to address these issues sooner rather than later. And by doing so, you're mitigating your risk. Uh, so, so it sounds like it's the right thing to do. In the event of a claim, by doing this, by discussing this this evening, by funding this, and by engaging in a, a process of addressing all of these issues once we know about them, I think should uh, something occur, uh, they would all uh, uh, be of benefit to us uh, in, in the event of a lawsuit. Yeah, the, the reality is, Attorney Baldwin, again, is you can't, you can't prevent a lawsuit from being filed, but the, uh, the defenses that can be asserted in, in each situation is uh, kind of unique or particular to that claim. Um, so it may or may not help in uh, defending any such claims should they be brought, but uh, certainly you're looking to mitigate the potential for such claims being filed. So it, it makes perfect sense from that kind of broad perspective. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, okay. Is there any additional questions from the body? Is there any comments from the public on this item? Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Our next item uh, is item number 13. Uh, this is to hear and consider a bond resolution regarding um, the emergency radio project authorizing a grant to reimburse their uh, 3 million 500 for such appropriation, such appropriation. And can I get a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Chief Calamaris and Chief McCarthy both on the line. Um, this is a familiar. We also have uh, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Karen Dunn on. Thank you for being here. Um, this is an item you've heard so much about. We've talked about this probably more than any item um, in the past year. And we uh, had announced that we did were awarded a $3.5 million grant, federal grant toward this project um, and the project itself cost $7 million and the, uh, the first 3.5 would provide the infrastructure uh, for the project and the other part of the project would actually allow our first responders to have the radios and all the equipment um, to be able to utilize it for their safety and for the safety of the public. I am going to open it up uh, to uh, either chiefs who wants to jump in and um, just sort of give a quick um, overview of this, or do you want me just to open it up to the board, considering we've talked about this quite a bit? Um, Madam First Select Woman, I think yeah, that- it, you, if, Chief. Yeah, for benefit of the public record, I think that re the Chief should just basically step us through this quickly. Chief, Ka sure. Chief Calamars, okay. You can hear me okay? Yeah, I couldn't hear you before. Sure. <laughs> so thank you to the board for uh, allowing me to propose this and uh, and for your support in this. You're back off again. I think you're having a little connection issue, Chief. Freezing a little bit. So I think I'm going to, are you? Chief. Any better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, this proposal, as the first select woman indicated, has been uh, out there for a little while. Uh, we were grateful to get the 3.5 million from uh, the grant from uh, Blumenthal's office. And um, this would 
be for a replacement of our public safety radios for fire and police. Um, Chief McCarthy, you, you want to add anything? Uh, just a, uh, a couple that? of things. Um, it's important to note that uh, this has been in the capital forecast for probably four or five years, and we have suspended maintaining or suspended replacing critical infrastructure in our radio systems uh, in anticipation of this project moving forward. Uh, additionally, uh, way back in the early teens, uh, we got $6 million of federal funding that allowed us to build the backbone of this system, um, which created the opportunity for us to build onto the state system and, and get their support of that going forward. So uh, it provides us interoperability, not only in uh, the town of Fairfield, but our mutual aid partners and, as well as state and getting a lot of support from the state of Connecticut in their department of uh, telecommunications. So uh, it is certainly a, a, a big improvement for public safety communications. And just to kind of uh, remind um, the members and anyone who might be listening, because um, we have talked about this project quite a bit. Um, the the pro the project we are basically Fairfield's uh, communication systems is antiquated. Every uh, surrounding community around us is uh, has brand new equipment. They're all signed into the state service, and as um, uh, Chief Dunn and uh, our two uh, chiefs explained during uh, workshop meetings and some other uh, capital meetings that we're, we're like traveling to buy radios literally on like eBay, trying to find parts for the old radio system. And fairly soon enough, we're going to be blocked out of being able to have um, interconnectivity with the surrounding communities, which is obviously going to put um, not only our public at risk, but also our first responders. So. I mean, it is it just it's just a safety issue, and they need to communicate um, with each other. And they need to communicate with our um, municipal aid partners, and they need to be able to uh, communicate <laughs> effectively with high, with the technology that everyone else has. That's I guess it's the simplest way to put it. Uh, uh, just to add on that, if you recall the 9/11 Commission, the number one recommendation of the 9/11 Commission. Uh, after uh, that event uh, in 2001 was to improve uh, interoperability between public safety entities. Uh, and uh, it's taken us uh, 20 years to get there, uh, 22 years to get there, but uh, we're there. And uh, uh, this is vitally important for us to be able to communicate, not only in town, but as the first black woman said, uh, we rely on mutual aid every day on I-95 uh, and uh, with Bridgeport and Westport coming in or us going to Bridgeport and Westport uh, providing mutual aid uh, and we need to be on the same platform. Um, Madam First Select Woman, if, if I might. Sure. The chiefs were kind enough. I don't know, it's been quite some time now, maybe two years ago uh, to bring me in on this issue as kind of a guinea pig and step me through a lot of the issues and challenges and opportunities that this uh, that their current state represented and and what they were trying to go to uh, to their future state. So to your earlier comments, I'm very familiar with it. I think one of the things, Chief, not that we want to brag, broadcast this widely or anything, but I think that there are some spots in town, as I recall presently, that have uh, very challenged radio communications, which which um, does cause a dangerous situation. So, so once again, we're in a situation where we we need to do something here. Is that? Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. You know, we can we can uh, discuss the failures. There are failures every day uh, with regards to our radio system. Um, uh, you know, in storms, it's worse than on, on regular days, uh, missed or uh, failed communications uh, between officers, between officers and dispatch. And, uh, you know, which our technology is old. It was put together in the in the 90s. And um, it's it's just time to it, to replace it and get up to speed with the technology that we have. I, I want to make sure how long are these is this system supposed to last what and what's kind of the annual maintenance that we're signing up for for on this. So, uh, 
as far as the the radios themselves the the whole system is a whole i just I, I understand you need to replace radios more frequently than the system but i just want to know the system itself how long is it supposed to last uh to my understanding the radio the radio uh the radios that we're going on to are uh the the software to them is sustained by the state so uh they kind of support the infrastructure and we would then support the end user um while the infrastructure has to be put in place by us for starters uh as the i guess as as upgrades are necessary the state takes care of those upgrades right so we have a bond in front of us that says this is going to last 10 years is are, are these items going to last us 10 years i don't want to be paying for them when they're out of service if i can jump in chief uh certainly uh fire department experience with mobiles and portables um uh we get better than 10-year life uh, out of uh, radios uh and as uh, chief calamaris uh, pointed out uh, the backbone infrastructure will be maintained uh, by the state of Connecticut. Um, so we are we are responsible for the subscriber units uh, that uh, operate in the field. And our history has been uh, that we get greater than 10 years service out of them. But, you know, and I think we talked about this earlier. There will be some failures, some replacements due to damage. Um, uh, but uh, those will be few and far between. And there no. is an extended warranty uh, for the project that's included in the price that brings us out to year seven. And um, yeah, and I think you've said previously that the cost to replace anything for damage or whatever will be borne within the operating costs of the departments, correct? Typically how we do it, yes. Okay. I have no further questions right now. Okay. Nancy, do you have anything? Nope. One, okay. one, there... yeah, one comment. I'd like to congratulate um, the departments and the administration. I know uh, one of the reasons I said I heard about this a couple of years ago now was that you guys looked, uh, you guys and ladies, uh, looked long and hard to find um, grants to help off offset the cost of this. And I know there was a, a couple of failed attempts, and then finally, uh, you were able to to find a grant to get half of it. So, um, although it's a big number, uh, I'm really happy with it that you guys were able to do that. And I congratulate you on bringing that home and and the team that put that together. Thank you. Thank you. I want to especially recognize uh, Captain Koval, who spent a, a <laughs> lot of time writing this uh, and working on this. Um, I know a lot of people contributed, but he did. Put in, uh, I think the 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 yeoman some hard amount of effort into uh, getting this done. Um, so kudos to Captain Kogel. Uh, Three point five million. It's a it's a nice thing to have. Yeah. Are there any uh, comments from the public on this item? Seeing none. I'll bring it back to the body. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Chiefs. Thank you. Thank you. Chiefs. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, we are doing pretty good um, on time. All right, so um, our next item uh, this is item, item number 14. Uh, this uh, can I get a motion for uh, a resolution appropriating? 2.250 for a tide gate system project uh issuing bonds for the period of 20 years so moved seconded thank you uh i believe uh mr bishop is on the line um i know we've talked about the tide gates for quite a while um but uh if you could just run it down um mr bishop for the board that'd be great sure Thank you all. Can you hear me clear? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Thank you all. Uh, this Tidegate project, similar to the ones I've spoken about uh, recently under other other budget um, discussions, 
uh, is the Pine Creek Tide Gate uh, just north of uh, Kiwanis Field off Old Dam Road. Um, it's a triple tide gate, uh, self-regulating tide gate system um, that drains all of lower Pine Creek um, to its terminus in the sound. Uh, they were originally installed in 1980, um, replaced in 99, uh, and it also underwent some service um, repairs uh, in 2010 and 2012. Um, similar to the other projects, they are uh, at the end of their lifetime. Um, and I know this started in 2019 with my predecessor um, and then kind of uh, uh, stalled, I guess you could say. Um, and uh, they're coming back to me to uh, push this forward. Um, we do have conditional approval from Connecticut DEP um, at this point, and we are currently in a uh, holding pattern working with uh, the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, which we need approval for before we could get the final approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the purpose of what will happen with this project is a replacement uh, there's exist three existing SRTs that will be replaced by five. Um, the five new tide gates uh, will re, uh, realign the channel in its natural um, flow pattern. Uh, that will also give us more capacity to regulate um, upper and lower uh, tidal marsh systems in Pine Creek, uh, which I think uh, only helps us in the future with um, higher intensity and volume storms. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, working with the State Historic Preservation Office, SHPO, um, we had conversations with recently. Um, they're requiring uh, two things which are factored into this um, request number, um, that the uh, historic railroad bridge that is currently in the way of the new tide gates um, w must be uh, maintained to appear as a bridge and the original trusses that are historically significant um, are to be restored and uh, remain on that location. Uh, so we're in that process now. Um, and uh, I think that's probably my quickest summary. Uh, I'll take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Tim. Um, that's, that was very helpful. Um, I'll open it up to the body for any questions. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Silly question here. Well, first, I've got a couple of things. Mr. Sastrom, I just want to make sure, and I know you can't talk, so. I can uh, talk. Oh, he's oh, back. You can't talk now. Beautiful. <laughs> Quick the, question. On the, th on the third device I went to. <laughs> there you go. Well, here's here's the, I've had technological challenges myself in the past, so I get it. Um, here's, uh, quickly for you, um, all these bonds that are before us this evening, standard the only thing changing is really the duration of the bonds, but I want to make sure that everything is in in standard form uh, and that yes, you've reviewed I everything. I, I would say these are all in standard form. Uh, the one that I couldn't speak about, obviously, was the WPCA one, and we have done this before when, when the town, because of the town's great credit rating and the WPCA doesn't issue its own bonds, the town issued bonds on behalf of the WPCA, and then we will enter into this memorandum of understanding where the WPCA, either through its fund balance or user fields, will agree to uh, agree to reimburse the town. So you've already passed that one when I couldn't talk. Um, right. A couple of the upcoming ones, also you will notice that the appropriation is more than the authorization because the town already knows it is receiving grant funds and we're reflecting that in the bond resolution. So um, those two nuances um, are, are covered in the various resolutions you have tonight. Okay, nothing we should be concerned about based on them all being uh, consistent with past practice, is that correct? They're all consistent with past practice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then going back, so in layman's terms, doing this tide gate, which doesn't sound thrilling or exciting at all, but needs to be done, what does it mean? What's the benefit? Uh, uh, the benefit is uh, it is a flood control structure. Um, and we, the, the benefit is to avoid catastrophic failure. I would say uh, the, the number one um, benefit, uh, side effects, our uh, enhanced control for um, environmental quality with the uh, the, the tidal um, you know tidal habitat uh, of, of the marshland, you know tidal waters moving in and out of the system, 
uh, but number one would be um, flood control. Uh, so is, is it fair to say that we're improving things and not just replacing what we already exist? I want to make sure we're getting more out of this than just, hey, we used to have this one, it's old, we're replacing it with something that's just going to give us the exact same benefit that the older one did. Correct. Uh, two improvements, uh, major improvements to note are we are going from uh, three, you know, picture tubes or uh, culverts. We're going from three to five, um, similar engineering, but more capacity. Uh, so that's an improvement right there with, with more control with uh, uh, the structures themselves. Um, so the that means, so that means we can handle more water more quickly should we have some of these massive storms and get it out of there so there's a direct benefit to the neighborhoods and to the community by doing that is that fair to say i don't want to put words in your mouth yes no that's that is accurate okay um and, and the second is like i said aligning the channel uh right now it, it there's a it empties and and uh, flows into a curve which was not the original alignment i'm not sure why it was uh done that way but just having that extra um, you know, flow pattern, I, I think, enhances the, uh, the overall ease of water to move in and out as well. Okay. okay. Um, and I also add that I, that I uh, forgot to before was uh, I'm in the process working with um, the finance department, specifically Terry Brown, the grant coordinator. Uh, we spoke with some people um, in the historic realm to uh, look for and seek out grants towards the um, restoration of the historic railroad bridge as well. So hopefully somewhere in there, we could recoup some costs uh, in that restoration. Um, might not be huge, but uh, we're in that pr process of exploring that now. Okay, and this has obviously been spoken about with the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it will um, when the time comes uh, to notice it and, and uh, we have some more um, more facts on uh, timing and whatnot. But that discussion of timing has uh, was part of the discussion with Connecticut Deep. Um, luckily, there's no uh, immediate neighbors to our open space because it is pretty vast, but uh, the closest would be um, on the old old dam road side. Since we're surrounded by water in the in the former landfill and solar array to the north, it's uh, it's pretty quiet immediately adjacent. Right. Great. Thank you so much for your commentary. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Thank you, um, Nancy. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Is there any uh, member of the public that has any uh, comment? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, the motion carries unanimously. Um, awesome, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank you all. Um, item number 15, um, can I get a motion to, um, to, can, can to adopt the reading? I'm just gonna I'll, do I'll cursor, to, okay. cursory, cursory. Uh, resolution appropriating 450000 for the cost of the transfer station repair project um, uh, bond. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Um, we have uh, John Cattell on the line, as well as um, I think Bucky, yes, still there. And we have Jared and our bond counsel, uh, Mr. Stastrom. I will open it up. Uh, John, do you want to take it? Bucky, who wants to? present well let me say first of all that the report on the transfer station was conducted before my arrival here uh it was conducted because uh it there were it was evident that uh there was a lack of investment in in the transfer station the uh that report was extensive and uh o over the past uh, year and a half or so we've tried to do what we could in-house but now we're at the point where some of these major components uh have to be addressed and have to be repaired or replaced so uh john you could you could talk about the granular issues uh of this but uh 
uh, for the most part, uh, that transfer station, which gets an awful lot of uh, activity every day, uh, has to be maintained. And uh, you're paying now for decades of neglect in uh, addressing the needs of that facility. John, you're on mute. You're on mute, John. Hi, uh, this is for repairs so that we can re um, repair the uh, overhead doors. Uh, there are seven overhead doors, which none of them work. Um, there's a stairwell that needs to be replaced that uh, has already uh, failed a couple of times um, that we've been band-aiding apart uh, together. Um, fans uh, for exhaust system uh, to bring it up to code with the proper sensors, uh, carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Um, there's uh, environmental issues with uh, the drains not working and having a lot of the sludge and juices collect on the floor becoming uh, a hazard for slips and falls and odors um, as well as then also the uh, tipping floor repairs uh, that will eventually be addressed also where rebar is starting to show and if there's any specific questions I can drill down into more if you'd like. I do have some questions. I'll wait to see Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'll open it up to the board for questions. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Madam First Select Woman. Um, gentlemen, thanks for being here. I've heard a lot about the transfer station over the last couple of years and a lot of the issues and challenges there. Um, does this amount of money extend the useful life of the transfer station? Forget just fixing what's wrong on a day-to-day -day basis. We're being asked to issue a bond for 15 years. Does this transfer station have 15 years of life left in it? Are we going to do this and then be told that the transfer station needs to be replaced completely? No. It, well, first of all, uh, just to replace it, try and replace it would be uh, – take years to try and figure that one out because this thing is used uh, six days a week. Um, right. Even these repairs uh, have to be done while still maintaining operation of the transfer station in full. So the, you got a good structure there. It just needs to be, you know, some of the mechanical issues. Uh, we just got done finishing the roof where we, you know, we had water damage to these stairs that rusted rest of them, uh, the metal to where you can see light through them. Uh, so yeah, it should carry you at least 15 years. John, is this building going to be solid when we're done with this 450? Are, are you, you know, are we making this a building that we can be comfortable that our employees are safe working in it and that we've addressed the issues? Yes. Can you answer that, John? You know, that, Building's been there for almost 40 years, Tom. Right. And and the bones of that building are are excellent. It cost a lot of money to build that building. I was I was a member of of the uh, group in the middle 80s that approved this whole system of transfer stations and all. You were like 15 years old then, right, John? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the bones are good, or we wouldn't ask for. Uh, these sort of funds. This money has to be invested in order to extend the life of this building. This building can last another 35 years if you just put these small amounts into these buildings such as this. I think at the time that building was built, it was almost $4 million. John, do we have a maintenance plan going forward? Maybe this is Mr. Ryan's question, but we're going to put all this money in are we going to maintain these buildings going forward? Because it sounds like we didn't do that great a job doing that in situations like this. As I said, Tom, we had a, a plan was on my desk when I arrived here and right. it was extensive. We have a plan. Uh, there's not, this isn't a complicated building. Right. Uh, you know, One we, thinks so. Yeah. We, we've done the electrical work. We're done. We're doing the roofing work. We have to seal the building as John's explained and this budget 
uh, addresses all those items that we think have to be done right now uh, in order to uh, maintain the usability of that building. Great. Thank you. I don't have it. And Mr. Sastrom has answered my questions uh, regarding the bonds themselves. So. Nancy, do you have anything? She might be on mute. Nance. I was on mute <laughs> and I was trying. I don't have anything additional. Thank you. Um, is there any member of the public that would like to comment on this item? Okay, seeing none. Back to the body. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We are doing really, really good. I'm excited. Okay, yes, I know. Um, we might not have to come back on Wednesday, fingers crossed. Okay, item number 16. Um, this is uh, I, also I a only ten year. Waved. Yep, Sorry, ten year I just bond. only officially waived yep. until item 10, so I don't know yep. if we need to, for the record, officially waive the reading of the of No, any I'm not going to read the whole thing. So uh, make a okay. motion, uh, asking for a motion uh, for a 10 year bond to um, for 4.125 for the cost related to for a turf project at Roger Ledlow Middle School. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. I'll second it. Okay, very good. Uh, Anthony's on the line uh, to talk about this. I just want to quickly add that um, the working group, the capital working group uh, that I put together has been meeting and meeting and these are all the items that you're uh, basically seeing today are items that the group, uh, two members of our Board of Finance, two members of RTM, and myself and um, the Board of Education and um, Finance Departments uh, had some general consensus on. You know, as we know, we've probably, I know the board has received a tremendous amount of emails over the past year regarding turf fields. Um, this is a very important item to uh, many uh, members of our community regarding our fields, uh, the ability to use the fields more often, uh, to schedule games and such. And obviously turf fields can be used so much more uh, than regular fields can because uh, you don't have to worry about uh, giving them time to rest and things like that or weather. So um, these are, this was one of two fields that were identified by these groups. And this uh, item actually was in the Capitol uh, waterfall uh, since 2017. So we thought it would be a good idea to uh, add this uh, to try to get ahead of our needs, our turf needs, uh, our field use needs. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of, uh, which is good. We have a lot of kids playing sports and that's a good thing. And we wanna be able to do our best to accommodate the additional use uh, that is needed. And I'll open it up, give it to Anthony to, uh, to jump in. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, thank you, Madam for Select Woman. And you basically just took my whole presentation. <laughs> um, with that being said, um, this might be a question for Dave Kelly. If I hit the share button, will it actually share my screen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted, while I'm talking, I just wanted to throw this up on the screen so you guys could see it. Um, this is the tentative design that we've been talking about for Ludlow Middle School. Um, as you guys do know, and again, as the first select woman just um, mentioned, um, there's a big push for turf fields in our town. Um, right now, we only have the one real public uh, turf field at Tomlinson. Both of our high schools do have one turf field each, so that gives us three fields uh, between Board of Ed and town. Um, when you look at the surrounding neighborhoods, um, you'll see that there are towns that have eight, nine, or 10 uh, turf fields. Uh, some of these towns are bigger than us, some are smaller than us, but we've definitely fallen behind as far as our facilities have gone. Um, what we're looking to do here at uh, Roger Ludlow Middle School is turf that backfield. Essentially, you have space for about a field and a half. Um, with the concept we've laid out here, we're looking to fit a full-size multi-purpose field, um, which would be used for a, a number of sports, very much like uh, Tomlinson Middle School. I think we have that line for 11 sports. Um, you know, girls field hockey, um, lacrosse boys and girls both soccer um we have football here and then one of the most interesting and i, I think one of the, the nicest parts of this would be to overlay a girls softball field um down in the corner you'll see obviously you wouldn't be able to play these things all at the same time 
Um, but this would give us a turf softball field or a turf little league field. So now if the varsity team um, got rained out over at Sturgis, you know, day like today, they could potentially slide up over here um, and play a game. Um, we would like to put lights on this location. There are lights at Fairfield Ludlow High School already. Um, this location is right next to I-95, so it is uh, very accessible um, from, from a, a, a tournament standpoint. If you were to host a tournament on the Ludlow property, um, you would have use of both of these fields potentially. Um, you'll see that we were looking at expanding parking. We would have to relocate locate the ropes course that's there. Um, but I am I'm happy to take any initial questions. Again, we're gonna put this out to RFP. Um, we will go through the design phase. So th again, this is a concept that we've put together, but it may change um, based upon, you know, uh, whatever our designer ends up, you know, seeing, maybe we overlooked something here. Um, but this would be a huge step up for us. It would increase our number of usable hours to about 500, 550 additional hours outside of what we're already booking, which would um, hopefully free up some of the bottleneck we have on our multi-purpose fields, not our, not necessarily our ball diamonds, but our multi-purpose fields. I, I have a couple questions actually. Sure, go right ahead, Nancy. Um, one, I would just like to know, um, is it possible to know who those committee members are making the decisions about that, just for the record? Um, if you could share that, um, if it's not now on the meeting, but it would just be great to know who's looking at the, the capital projects and, and making the call. Um, what, was there really any subjective nature to this field versus another field, just because we are getting inbound calls and emails and, and turf is, is something that is of great interest to so many in town. So I was just curious, you know, what went into this specific one with this group? And do we save anything by maybe doing a second field also, you know, kind of spending more now, but in the long run, does that do anything for us? Those are my questions. So I don't, I don't think the group question was directed to me, but I can answer the other questions or attempt to answer the other questions. As, as uh, the first luck woman mentioned, I've had this field on the waterfall chart um, since at least 2017. I've also had South Pine Creek and Sullivan Field on the list. Um, outside of that, again, I typically try to look five to seven years. Um, at that point, after we get the, these other fields in, again, I have those on for next year, um, if the working group ends up uh, putting them on there for next year. But um, I would like to look at the other side of town. Fairfield Ward, uh, that complex is a great facility um, that it would be a, an ideal candidate for turf, but that does fall under the Board of Education. So um, a little more complicated on that side of things, but there are other locations on the other side of town. Um, Lower Tunxus Hill, which is currently um, a large baseball field um, and a multi-purpose field in the outfield portion. Um, again, a good location for a, a turf field. Um, there was potential of a turf field there back in the 70s. Um, there was a lot of talk about things that over there, but um, you know, kind of all fallen, fallen along the wayside. Um, and then obviously I think another uh, potential location on the other side of town is uh, the Burroughs Complex. Um, the only thing with the Burroughs Complex is you really are limited um, with potential use for lights only because the neighbors are right on top of that field. Um, I think I got them all there. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Um, do you, Nance, do you have other questions? I'll sit back and. No, listen. just at some point it, it would, it, the working group, I was just ah, wondering okay. for the record if you could let us know. I know you said members of the Board of, of Finance, but I was, I was curious if it was all, who and who from the administration is, is looking at these issues. Are you talking directly about the, the capital projects or the field? Just use, you had just said that your working group, that this was one of the, so you mentioned the working group. So I just wanted oh, to know yeah. for the record who that was. Right, so the capital, I mentioned this um, quite a few times uh, during our meetings and also um, during the capital workshop that I was putting the working group together uh, to uh, identify, well, to put together our capital plan, uh, a town's ca a five-year capital plan. It came to my attention through Jared Smith's um, 
interactions with other uh, CFOs that towns really should have a five-year capital plan. It's not set in stone, so to speak, but to have a five-year capital plan. And we've kind of been operating by the waterfall capital planning meeting where there's a lot of items discussed, um, but they would just be on the waterfall. And then it was the directive of the first select person to just choose items off of that plan for consideration by the town bodies. And I thought it would be more collaborative to have um, two members of the Board of Finance, two members of the RTM, and the chairwoman and chair vice chair of the Board of Ed collaborate, sit you know, down and look at all of our capital needs. And so what we did was we've been meeting and we put together the 22-23 capital list. And um, we were going to be reconvene in the fall to work on the remaining four years. Now, obviously, you know, this is up for discussions and such a, like that, but these are all items that are already on lists and we've had department heads come in and uh, different things. And uh, we have, a, I pour, sort of put in a bonding cap as well. So we're look, we're operating under that as, but this uh, year it's not even close to what, um, what I've been talking about. That'll be, I would imagine much more spirited discussions in the fall when we start working on the four year. Um, but the members are uh, the chairwoman of the Board of Finance, Lori Charlton, uh, Jim Walsh, and uh, Mark McDermott from the RTM, and Jeff Steele from the RTM, and uh, Christine Vitali, and Nick Asa. And they have Angelus and their group and their finance people, and then our entire financial uh, um, department, too. And we have... Uh, various department heads, sort of like a mini capital planning um, and asking for them to, you know, go back to their bodies and ask for consensus and information. But um, I, does that answer your question, Nance? Yeah, it does. I was, I, I knew exactly what the working committee was. I had only sure. just really been asking for the specific people so that sure. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Um, is there any questions about the item, about the <laughs> specific item? Yeah. I do. Sure. Um, first of all, as I recall, Anthony, this was was this the field that was damaged a few years ago um, during a lacrosse tournament or something, and there was an insurance claim and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it was. And did we get paid out on that? So we're not out of pocket uh, for any costs of of this field right now. I believe that that I don't know that that litigation had been. Uh, Finished. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Who would, yeah. Town, town Attorney Jim Baldwin. The answer is yes. That litigation ended uh, probably a year, year and a half ago. So that's been resolved. And did we get paid, Jim? I don't remember. I want to make sure that we're not. We, we, did, get, money. we did get compensation out of the, uh, the settlement. Yes. Okay. So we're not basically ripping up a field that taxpayers paid for to put down artificial turf on that field now and wasting that money that we already spent. You're not wasting the money that you already spent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anthony, you have in short order a, I'm going to call it a strategic plan, but it's a vision document that's coming out in the next, I would think two, three months. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Master plan will be out this summer. Thank you, master plan. So where did this fall on that master plan? What, I'm, what I don't want to do is approve something like this going forward and then have your master plan come out and say, actually, we should have done Ward or we should have done Sullivan Field. Where is this been synced up and jived up with that? Yeah, so all all our plans have been shared with the master planning group. So I had given them my waterfall chart. So they know, they know they've had this plan. They've seen this drawing here that we're looking at. Um, so they've incorporated this into their, their master, their overall plan. Um, in addition to other things that they've added, we've given them, um, you know, planning and zonings, plan of conservation and development, um, bike and pedestrian uh, plans. Uh, did they, agree, did they agree with this though? Do they agree? Yeah, Anthony. Did they come back and say, yeah, Anthony, with all the work we've done to date, we agree that this should be the priority of this field? Yes, the turf fields in this town should be the priority. So yes, they do agree with that. Um, Multi-purpose fields should be the priority. 
do they agree with this location or they didn't opine on that? They did not opine on that. Is there any reason to believe that this isn't the location that they would pick? Why did you pick this location if they didn't opine on it? Access. It's all about accessibility and again to host a tournament on this at this area you have Ludlow High School turf field right there. You would now have Ludlow Middle School turf field right there. You would also have Tomlinson Middle School right there. That's three turf fields within, you know, less than a quarter of a mile right off of 95, right next to your downtown area. There is not a better location for mul um, a multi field uh, location. And again, we don't really have space in town currently um, where we can create a unity park like Trumbull or even a veterans park like Norwalk where they have multiple fields or a cap pasture. Um, but this is uh, kind of a makeshift uh, way to do that. With your, um, I remember when we started putting in, I don't even think you were the director at that point, Jerry Lombardo might've been, but we started work with the school system and putting in the turf fields for the football um teams yep i was here for that yeah um and we approved it we passed it they were putting in the fields and all of a sudden we started getting inundated with uh thoughts that they were carcinogenic and all that has that been considered here kurt can you give us a little bit of uh history and best information you have on those issues at this present point in time yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I fully expect that there will be people that come out to speak against um, artificial turf. Um, you know, best information that we have to go off of is still uh, the Department of Health uh, for Connecticut, um, where really everything is inconclusive. There's not one study right now that is saying um, that there's any harm outside of in ingesting um, crumb rubber. And the crumb rubber that we're not necessarily using crumb rubber. Everything we've quoted here is for an encapsulated um, crumb rubber, which is safer than just uh, you know bare crumb rubber. And that's what our current three fields have on it. There are other alternatives. I mean, obviously they're more expensive, but um, you could go you know an alternate fill type uh, situation where there's coconut husk. Um, again, to do something like that, you've got to put in irrigation, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of an artificial field, you're irrigating it, then, you know, there's going to be days where it's closed. There's going to be days when, it, when it's cold and it's frozen and you can't play. Um, you could go sand. Again, sand, Westport just put a sand in, but it's field hockey only. That's typically how a field hockey field is made. Um, you know, again, we're looking at multi-purpose fields. So um, to the health issue, there is no conclusive evidence that there is any health issue at the moment. Do you, um, I had another question here. What are we going to save on annually on maintenance costs on these? Because that's another part of this, right? Is there's a savings. First of all, there's the ability to use these fields a lot more often than our existing fields because of the drainage issues, correct? That's correct. Secondly, there was an annual savings on not having to sod, cut the grass, reline them. Do, do we have a number on that? Forgive me. I'm trying to access my my backup, which I read this weekend, but I can't from my current location. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so we spend about $50,000 just mowing, just maintaining Ludlow Middle School. That's not including any time we need to resod. Resodding can run. You know, when we just redid when we redid that field a few years ago from the damage, that was about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar project. Again, that's just resodding. Um, so that those are those are big numbers. Yeah, we don't Did have you, to resod every year, but and we do currently host a couple, at least one tournament. I'm aware of. I think Fast hopes, hosts a tournament there, don't they? They did in the past. I don't know that they've been doing it lately. Uh, COVID, right. COVID hit them pretty right. hard. Um, and then I believe they did host something, but it was a much smaller scale. Um, yep. We do host stick, uh, Sticks for Soldiers, uh, the lacrosse tournament that does play at that location as well. They, they get a few other fields from Fairfield U and Wakeman and um, a couple others. But um, those are really the big tournaments that you know, are taking place now. Not to say that we can't have other tournaments. I know, you know, Fairfield Youth Football would love to host some type of tournament in town. They, we just don't have the field space to do that or the facilities to, to adequately facilitate it. Yeah, one of the other things, thank you for that. One of the other things I recall when we put in the, the football fields, 
um, was that they were supposed to last, I don't even remember, X number of years, and, and this is going to be great, and we're going to get that back. And literally, it was about, I want to say, half the time, maybe a little bit more. I can see by the smile of your face, you know where I'm going with this, yeah. uh, that they lasted. So what can we expect on this in terms of uh, length of duration of time that this field is going to last? So most of these fields are getting an eight-year warranty. Um, the lifespan is about 10 to 12 years. And then that's when they need they typically uh, start failing the, the uh, G-force testing, which is the impact testing. Um, and then they need to be replaced. And that was what we just did at our at the two high schools and Tomlins. And we all we replaced them in 15, 16, and 17. Um, so those will be coming up, you know, pretty much in uh, the next five years or so to be replaced again. So was it the same price point uh, I, when you had to replace them? I mean, get, uh, for, factor out inflation, but you know, you're asking for four million bucks here. In 10 years, are we going to be looking at another 4 million bucks? No. Um, to replace Tomlinson, for example, uh, that's about a, it was about a million dollars to build, but it was only, you know, 400 to replace. Um, so you don't have to replace all the structural uh, drainage and everything else that's there, unless obviously there was something that happened. But, um, you know, in this case, it's, I, I, for lack of a better term, you're replacing uh, the carpeting. Yeah. Um, got it. I do want to um, agree with you. Uh, I got involved in this issue locally last spring. Some some uh, some of the leagues contacted me, and I went around and toured all the fields in town. I was familiar with Fairfield National Little League, and that I coached there for years. Um, you're absolutely correct. The fields in town, in comparison uh, to a lot of other towns, are not in, not in good shape. Um, there's there's so many towns, both smaller and larger, that have uh, so much nicer and, quite frankly, safer uh, facilities than we than we currently pro uh, provide for both. You know, we talk about youth, and you mentioned that, but also there's adult leagues and things like that that use these fields as well that I've noted. But it it does become when your child or whatever is on a regional team and you're going to these other places it does hit you square in the face that Fairfield hasn't uh, invested in or maintained its fields the way they, they probably should. Um, my understanding is as well, talk a little bit about there's an organization out there that is committed uh, to raising funds towards this. If you were the first select woman want to talk about. So I'll just jump on. in really quick. Cause I know Nancy says she has to go because she does have. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah. um, um, the, you know, they're, they're, uh, what's the name of the group, uh, Nan Anthony? I, I always, Fair, yeah, Fair, Fairfield Athletic Foundation. Athletic, right. So they, uh, they're committed and other groups are committed to working to raise money, but we can talk more about that after I do want to make sure Nancy can go to her event. I mean, her, sure. wait, her Shiva. So yeah, I lost um, track of time. My there's apologies. There's no other answer. technical questions yeah. on this item. Um, I would like to. Uh, open it up to the public for comment if there is anyone and then go to a vote so we can end the meeting and then we can reconvene on Wednesday at three o'clock for our remaining items. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, Peter. Peter. Sure, go ahead, Peter. That's me. Hi, yeah. Peter Tallman. Um, I do support this, but I'm coming at this from another angle. And that's from Ludlow High School. As most people probably know by now, I know our Board of Ed knows. Um, Ludlow probably has the worst athletic facilities in Fairfield County, with the possible exception of Bridgeport Central. Um, this would be a huge benefit to Ludlow. They have one field, one field. They have 1,100 athletes, and they have one field. I realize this field is nearby, Sturgis is nearby, but Anthony runs a tight ship. As soon as it rains, the fields are closed. So while Ludlow kids are home playing video games, Ward is practicing. So um, that's pretty much it. I just hope that's weighed into the decision. It's not only a big benefit to the youth programs, but the uh, high school programs also. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment before we go back to the board for a vote? Okay, seeing none. 
Thank you, Peter, for taking the time to uh, share your opinion. Uh, we're back to the body. Um, okay. Well, uh, I'm going to ask uh, all in favor of this item. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. And um, we were almost made it, but um, uh, we do have a couple of other items. So I'm going to ask that um, I'm going to make a public a notice and then we can uh, send out a notice tomorrow. Jennifer will send out. So we'll have 24 hours notice that we will have the remaining items on the agenda uh, for the Board of Selectmen at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Hey, hey and Brenda. And I want to apologize to, uh, to the Board of Ed and the Chairwoman uh, for, for not being able to get to your item um, today. Nancy, condolences to your friend and to yourself. Um, Brent, you, can I? Yeah, can I ask that we do put on my question on the agenda for Wednesday related to what agreement or, or what the town's doing with the organization, just so that's fully out there? Right, we don't have a formal arrangement or agreement. Yeah, what are the discussions, Ben? What are you guys? Sure, happy to discuss that. Yep. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you everyone uh, for Motion being here to today adjourn. and thank you for um, taking the time. I know it was a lot of big agenda and I think we did pretty good. So, um, motion to adjourn, please. Can I get a motion? So moved. And I'll second it, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 And again, Nancy, we're very sorry for your friend's loss. I really appreciate that, thank you. All right, you take care. Good night all. Good night, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye. See you Bye.